Our next step in building our adjustable cabinet will be to put in some of the sliding doors that go in the front. So I am going to change this back to a southwest isometric view and I'll just put it back to 2D wireframe so we can line things up. Then over here on the left side, I'm going to change this orthographic view to the front view so we can draw our doors with a polyline that way. So I'll grab polyline. And then we're going to create a door that is 1 foot 10.25 inches and then come down 1 foot 0 0.25 seven five then back over and see for close once we have that in place we can once again use extrude select this rectangle and extrude it 0.25 now we can use our move command and move this door into place. Grab this corner and I'll line it up right there. You can look in our front view. Okay. Now I'm going to do a copy. Copy this door. Copy it straight over, and then we can look at it in a top view. Okay, so right now we can see that these two doors are right in line with each other. So if we actually wanted them to slide in any way, um, well, that just wouldn't work. So what we can do is do a move, pick one of the doors, and move it straight back at least. 0.25, that would actually have them touching, so you could even do it just a little farther if you wanted to, maybe 0.3 or something like that. And then we could move them so that they're actually open a little bit to make it a little more interesting. So, maybe we'll grab this left door and slide it off to the right 8 inches. And we'll take a look at that over here. Okay. And then we could just do a copy. Copy these two doors. And we'll pull them straight down to the bottom shelf. But this time, maybe we'll move this door back over 8 and we'll open up the other side maybe move that over 12 if we look at that in a shaded view we now have our cabinet with sliding doors on the top and the bottom we'll be able to make that out a little bit better once we have materials on Our next step in our cabinet creation will be to create the um, metal crossbars that go across the back, very similar to the desk that's in one of the videos available. So I'm going to change from a top view to a front view, and I'll change this back from shaded to wireframe so you can see it a little bit better. So what we want to do is actually make a few guidelines to create our X. So I can simply use a line for this, it doesn't really matter. And we're going to create a box that is 1 foot 10 and a half inches across and then 12 inches tall. Back and C for close. Once we have our rectangle, we can just make an X through the middle, just like that, and really at this point we can erase these guidelines. 
Now we will make two very small circles. And I'll make these really tiny, maybe 0.1. And 0.1 for the radius again. And we will sweep along these lines. So it's sweep, pick the circle, enter, and then the path. Once again, pick the circle, enter, and then the path to make the solid. Switching to a 3D view, I am going to move our new solid tubes. I'll grab from the quadrant point, and I'm going to move it to the second row down, right there. You can see that in the front view. And I'm just going to move this over to the left, point one just to get that in place. And I'm going to take a look at this from a left view too to make sure that's lined up nicely in the middle. Then in my 3D view, I'll just copy it over. Select these two. And once again, I'll just move it over, point one. And if I wanted to be very neat about this, I could use subtractions to clean those little ends off, but I think that's good enough for now. So looking at that in a shaded view, you can see that we now have our metal crossbars going across the back. The final component that we're going to add to our adjustable cabinet will be the bank of drawers. So I'm going to work in the southwest isometric view. I'm going to grab a polyline and I'm just going to come out the front of the cabinet. I will have a line coming straight out at one foot three inches off to the right there at one foot ten point two five back one foot three and of course C for close. I will extrude that straight up four inches. At this point if I wanted to get uh, more realistic and fancier about it we could actually subtract out a void in the drawer or have built it with separate panels or something like that but this is more about the appearance and the actual functionality of the cabinet. This is obviously not for building. So we're going to keep this solid and just create a handle to go on the front. So I'm going to change my layer so you can see a little better. We're going to do a polyline and we'll have that polyline come out one inch off to the right four and back one again. I'll zoom in on that. We're going to do a fillet with a radius of 0.5 for a polyline to give that a little curve. And we'll put a circle on the end with a very small radius of 0.1 and use a sweep to sweep around that line and give it a thickness. Then we can move our new handle. I'll grab that top quadrant point and I'll snap it to the midpoint. I'm going to move it over two inches and down two inches. Okay. Now at this point I might just round off the front of that drawer a little bit so we can differentiate it. So I'm going to do a fillet with a radius of 0.25. Pick this box, enter, and pick the four front lines, enter, and give it a nice curve. 
Then I will copy the drawer and the handle, pick my base point, and go straight up four inches, enter, and then eight. So we have all three nice in a row. Then I will do a move, grab all six of these objects, grab its base point in this lower rear corner, and we will snap that back into place right there. I will zoom out and change this to a shaded view so you can see a little better. Okay, and I will change it to a 3D orbit. So at this point you have a fully modeled three-dimensional version of this adjustable cabinet with a bank of three drawers, a few sliding doors um, to go in the front of the open spaces, and those metal crossbars that go in the back.